Hello, a good quiet. Uh, my friend Rabbi Meza made a video recently about making pancakes and waffles on Pesach. And he asked, well, what problem is there? Why can't... And he, he phrased it saying, you know, you don't have to suffer. <laughs> I, now, I've gone weeks and weeks without pancakes or waffles, you know? I don't see how it's suffering to not eat pancakes or waffles for a week. I've probably gone months without eating pancakes or waffles. So I don't know what, what is this? You know, he said you can make pizza too. It doesn't have to be matzo pizza. It doesn't have to be out of matzo meal. You don't have to suffer. I, I don't remember the last time I ate pizza. We were thinking of getting a pizza just before I, or I guess it was a few weeks ago I got a pizza. You know, like we were thinking just before Pesach to get a pizza because it's easy. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> you know, not to have to, <coughs> you know, cook. And, and we didn't eat pizza. It's the end of the world if you don't have pizza, if you don't have a, a waffle, you don't have a, you don't have a pancake. I, <laughs> I, I, I think we have different definitions of what means suffering, you know. That being, you know, I mean, I I think about, I, you know, I work in a prison, and all year long the kosher diet is peanut butter and jelly. And on Pesach, it's it's, uh, it's baked potatoes and, and, uh, and hard-boiled eggs, and that's it, you know, and, and a piece of matzah. And some fruits and vegetables that aren't peeled. They have to peel their own carrots. You know, you, you, you want to talk about suffering. All right, I understand they commit a crime. You know, but, I mean, you look at, but you look at the federal prisons. They give, you know, meal mart prepared meals. And, and, the, and New York State prisons, they give, they give, uh, they give, what do you call it? They give, uh, you know, salami. You think they have a place that they, you know, make kosher meals, and I'm not, you know, and that's also not suffering, you know, it's, you know, it's, it is what it is, you know, but with that being said, I'll say one more Musar Vart before we get to the Halacha, so there was a Misa by Pukharov, uh, his Rebetzin just passed away this, uh, this, uh, this week, you know, the mother of the current Pukharov. And the, the old Pukharov, he came to me and he said, are you allowed to eat pizza on, pe on, on not on Pesach, on Shabbos? So they enjoy pizza. So they're eating Shabbos to have pizza. And Pukharov said, there's no halachic reason not to eat pizza. But it, it, there's something, uh, you know, I'll be musr, it's a... Uh, doesn't sit right, and then the, and the, the story, the, the way I heard the story is that these people eventually, they went off the derech, and the first Isser Kharis they did was they, they ate pizza on Pesach, because they couldn't hold back the, the time of the pizza. I remember the one who was telling me this, he, he was upset because I worked in a pizza shop, and the boys from the yeshiva that this, this rabbi teaches at... Uh, they wanted to get pizza. We would give them pizza. We'd sell, we would give, we'd sell them pizza. You know? And he said, you know, it's such gashmias. It's such, you know, because they were complaining the food in the yeshiva wasn't so good. And, uh, and, and the pizza said, the pizza's not so good. Like, what's that? <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I mean, people, they make things, taivas into... It's, it's a nonsense, you know? And, and we're all guilty of this. You know, things that, that really aren't that great, and we make this whole big deal out of something that's nothing, and we wind up, <laughs> everything falls apart from that, and we destroy our lives with that, but that's more certain. So, so just, but let, just like we said, a pizza on uh, Shabbos is not an isser, it's not forbidden, there's no halachic reason not to eat pizza on Shabbos, it's just, it's not traditional, and there's something wrong with it, you saw, uh, with this story, Person, a, a, a family is in Gavarn for Dorban because of this taiva. So it's Alpi Musser to say that not to eat 
pancakes for, for eight days, this high, that, that's called suffering. They have to have pancakes made out of matzah meal or, or bios, but the so we make pancakes out of out of potato starch. Personally, I, I, I like the potato starch pancakes. I, for me, I, I enjoy it. I look for, you know, I make, make onion rings with potato starch. It's really good. In, in a way, it's better than the, the stuff with the, with the hummus, in my opinion. But anyway, so then talking about what Rabbi Mazur said, with all due respect, he's correct in a certain sense that, that yeah, you know, you, you, it's, there's no halachic prohibition if you have if you know what you're doing the thing is most of us don't know what we're doing and he's right with he said people used to make matzah during Pesach and even today like in New Square if uh, the first night of Pesach is, is Shabbos oh, I'm sorry not if the first night of Pesach is what's a Shabbos you know when, when Erev Pesach is Shabbos in New Square they bake the matzahs on Yontiv Seder. Um, but the thing is, is with that you have to be very careful that you don't mess up. That's all. But if you, if you know what you're doing, and the fact of the matter is, yes, the the uh, what do you call it? The Like Yemenite matzahs, they're made like on a pan. Now they're not pancakes. They're not like, but yeah, you can make. There's discussion in, in, in the Gemara. Can you make sufganim? Can you do, can you make very light, you know, batters? And the thing is, if you know what you're doing and you make sure that it doesn't become chametz, so yes, you, you can. Does that mean you should? I don't know, but just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. You know, that's the you know that's the answer that I have. It's said, yeah, okay, if you really know what you're doing, yes, you can. But the, there's another caveat there now. Rabbi Meza was mentioning that you should smore a flour, and he said that there's a leaning opinion that it doesn't have to be smore a flour that you can use to wash a flour. I. I I'm not familiar with what he's saying to the point where I would say he's wrong. I mean, the issue between shmura and the regular matzah is, is it shmura mishas ha or shmura mishas hetchina? Is, uh, meaning, are we careful that the, that the flour doesn't touch water from the time when the wheat is cut, or are we careful from the time when the, when the flour is grounded, is, is grinded, ground? I, I don't know English so well. So, I got a perfect score on the verbal part of SATs, but I shouldn't can you English I don't know Yiddish either. So anyway, the So yeah, can you can you make can you make a pancake? Can you make a pizza? As if you don't leave it, you don't let it rise. You just you, you, you cook it right away. You bake it right away. Yeah, you can make such a thing. You need to know what you're doing. And, but the main thing is the flour that you buy. Maybe if you, you could get like unwashed whole wheat flour. I don't know. It's not, it doesn't have to be whole wheat. But like the unwashed flour it has to have a hashkocha. Flour, but if you if you really know what you're doing and you're really careful, there are other issues that we do say that the shear chimutz is less when the temperature is higher. So when the closer you are to a to an oven, you have to be more careful. That's what we say. I had different opinions. I guess so. You know. I mean. The, the matzahs that we have that, that are shelf stable, that, 
that's a that's a recent thing. It's only maybe the past 500 years that we have shelf stable boxes. The, the Ashkenazim also, before 500 years ago, would have the the soft boxes, and you would see them even later than that that they would have the soft boxes. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be the hard boxes. The reason we have hard boxes, although there are other you know things people talk about about the. Lots of being burnt, and it's an Indian that is that, that, uh, you know, burning their favors, whatever it is. But the uh, essentially, that's what we have are burnt matzahs, you know, you know, they're cooked at a very high temperature. But the mile of that is that you don't have to cook, you don't have to bake it the day before, you know. And that's the funny, you know, the chasidim they still bake matzahs, Erev Pesach make a big deal out of it. I never did that. I never really make matzahs. I once went to a matzah baker in my whole life. But the, you know, all the rabbis, they bake the matzahs every Pesach. So I'm a rough, he would only eat matzahs that he baked every Pesach. He said that the Arab Pesach matzahs are the least kosher matzahs, but that's all he would eat the whole Pesach for seven days. The eighth day, he'd eat other matzahs, regular matzahs. You know, but, and, and, before, and before the war, he would even eat matzahs made out of regular flour, the same flour that the, you know, the regular Manashevitz matzahs, whatever made from. He would he would make from such flour. He would ma- he would make handmade matzahs. The whole thing with the machine matzahs also. So that, again, a lot of these issues are more or less: Do we have a masora like this? Do we know what we're doing? I mean, what does it mean that do you have a masora? means you know what you're doing. You know, you know, most of us, we don't even know how to make masses, you know. We, 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 we're afraid we're going to mess it up. And the thing is, we should be educated. We should know. It's the same thing with a lot of things. A lot of things in halacha where we're constantly nervous that we're going to mess something up instead of, uh, instead of uh, actually, you know, doing what we're supposed to do. Guy doing? He's on the Uber already. Why is he still behind me? Is he a cop? So anyway, this guy, he's too close to me. So anyway, the... So the answer to Rabbi Bates is yes, you, if you really know what you're doing, and you have the right type of flower, it doesn't have to be shmura flower necessarily, but it has to be, it, it doesn't have to be shmura mishaz, Zero Vesvish Mishas Hatchina doesn't have to be guarded from the time that it was harvested, but it does have to be guarded from the time that it was ground. And the fact is that we have bleached flour, it's it's not, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, the flour itself is common, sir, according to most opinions that, 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 I, that I've heard of. Is it's already a question of comments, and that's the same same issue with uh, you know all the pretzels and the, and the pasta and all of these items that yeah they're not leavened or the pretzels they do leave them to leaven when they make pretzels. You, you have to know what you're talking about. You have to know what you're dealing with. But what's but so I'll be halacha. He's right. You, you want to try to make a pizza. It doesn't have to be a matzo pizza. Be, I mean, it has to be a matzo pizza, but it doesn't it doesn't have to be the matzo doesn't have to be pre baked. I guess theoretically, it, 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 it's hard to to be machria though. How do you know? You know what you're doing. Do you really know what you're doing? And and you have to be worried that it, there might be some chimuts because you know how it, you know how quickly does it get baked and so forth. And so we're machmir to, to bake matzahs in less than 18 minutes. The whole, really, the whole thing takes 5, 10 minutes. Because we're machmir, because we're strict. A machmir tov I love bracha, the one who's strict, he gets blessed for this. And, that, and, and it is true that even the machine matzahs essentially are a chumrah. But it's a chumrah because you're, you're 
philosophy of someone else. You let you letting somebody else be in charge of, of the of the shilas. You're not you're not developing a shilas. So so you know the answer I have is don't don't play around with these things. It's a, it's an iser kares. You know, I'm not saying everybody has to keep gebrox. Although, again, personally, I much prefer the, the potato starch for, for a lot of things than the gebrox. You know, the, the, the potato, certainly, in certain things of potato starch are not so geschmack, but they're getting better and better. Generally, the potato starch, I, you know, I like the potato starch cramps a little very much. It's so gefährlich, you know, like just, uh, you know, and then you have the hummus people who don't even touch potato starch, or they make their own at home, whatever. And, uh, elu ve elu. But to call this suffering, I mean, there's something wrong in the Musser sense. You know, it's one thing, it's enough. You want to talk about Kabbalah, all right, not all Hasidish. You want to talk about the kidneys all right you know you can you can discuss the, the question but but in, in a way you kind of see the slippery slope you know like like my rep says you know he, he, there was a a woman cleaning for pace after her husband was a, a, a rub a die and something and he said you all peace you don't have to According to Shulchan Aruch, you don't have to be so strict with these things. But she's all oh, you with your Shulchan Aruch. If we followed what you say, we'd be in the comments a long time ago. And the thing is, is that you know, at first it's, it's like a joke. You know, like, yeah, what do you mean? You know, it, you know, don't, it, don't 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 be a maniac. You know, try to find a good balance. You know, don't. Don't hate on Pesach, but on the other hand, just because you theoretically could make a a, 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 a what do you call it a pancake or, or a waffle on Pesach doesn't mean you should. You know, I mean, there has to be a limit at some point. You know, there has to be some kind of a gather, some kind of a fence around the Torah that you don't go and, and mamish eat chametz, you know? Because if, 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 if at some point you're not going <laughs> to, you know, so, all right. You want to you wanna eat the kidneys, you want to, you know. I mean, someone asked me today, you know, they came from a very chassidish home. They had some time when they weren't from, but now they're working on being from, trying to keep kosher and stuff. And, and they uh, they asked, you know, the Mountain Dew is that is that kosher and peso? They said, you know, as far as I know. There's an opinion that the Ashkenazim are allowed to have corn syrup. I saw Be'en I Reisi. There was a the Rosh Hashiva in Richmond, Rabbi Chait. He was a Dayan in Muncie. Right, he's more modern, but he's a Dayan. He was a Talmud Mova, by Moshe. He also learned by Rav Salavechik. And he, uh, he would drink regular soda openly on, on Pesach because... Moshe's Pesach, it's not only Moshe's Pesach, it's, a, it's the Pesach of really all the Gedolei Lita. Is that that's when something is already an oil or a, or a, or a syrup or something like that, it's it's not kidneys anymore. Um, it's a different story, but kidneys, the only thing is, is like the one time a year you can get real sugar in, in the Coca Cola and you, and you go and. and, and <laughs> And you drink corn syrup. All right, if you, but if you don't have a choice, you don't have a choice. You know, 
meaning even according to regular Ashkenazi understanding. The same thing, the the uh, Chayodim has a very interesting notation that, uh, again, why don't we do this? If, if we're allowed to eat, <coughs> excuse me, we're allowed to eat matzah, right? <laughs> right? We're allowed to eat matzah. So, what, why can't we make from from the kidneys something in the tzara of matzah? There should be no reason why we should be more machmir with kidneys than we are with chametz. That's what the Chayodim says. Again, we don't do it. The Chassidim say it has to do with katnas de moiche, you know. But the truth is, uh, you can do it. Uh, now, I don't do it. But the, I don't eat, I don't eat gabrox either, but I know that it's not, the same thing as certain people, they don't eat fish. You know, but in, in our house we eat fish. You know, that's uh, we still make the the falsher fish as a geschmack if we, you know, if if we have uh, access to it. You know, I forgot to the first days, but maybe maybe the last days we we'll make falsher fish. You know, so. Uh, Thirty-six, twenty-six. That's what this guy's uh, thing is. Uh, his license plate. So anyway, that's the. Uh, that's my take on this. You know. Yeah. You want to? You, you know. What? What? What's so bad to you? To to for one week make things out of, I mean, I understand the matzah meal, it's like kind of grainy, I don't, I don't like it I don't, I don't like the you know the uh, where the, the pancakes so much from, I used to, I don't know I don't know what you're doing you know, I, uh, we don't eat matzah bread, we don't do all these things in my house, but uh Again, if you really know what you're doing, you're big enough. I mean, this, this it's funny because, like, that, this was always the argument we would have about the, about the mikvah on Shabbos. You know, when the literature guys would say, do you really know uh, the halach is well enough you can go on mikvah on Shabbos and not... And not uh, not violate the Isser Shabbos. The thing is, is that the Isser Shabbos that we're talking about with going to Mikvah Shabbos is a Geder al Gavi Geder. It's a Xer al Gavi Xera. There's nothing to talk about. Here we're talking about Chametz. Talking about uh, Isser Kores. You know. So so there, there's a difference between Mikvah Shabbos and, and making your own matzah that's soft and the tzura of a pizza or the tzura of a of a uh, whatever tzura it is a waffle, a pancake and, and it's and it's matzah al pihalocha just because you can do it doesn't mean you should you know, it's better to just do things that the, the way I, I, unless it's a, an extreme example, but those extreme examples generally, you don't have access. To, you know, like, I mean, you know, someone said, you know, what was it that uh, Jared Kushner and, and Ivanka Trump, they were riding on a plane on on Shabbos. They got on before Shabbos, and when they got off, it was Shabbos was almost over. It was already over. Whatever it is. For sure, they got on before Shabbos and got off where, where, where they arrived was after Shabbos. There's no problem. But, uh, but so someone said, well, why can't they be just like everybody else? You know, a regular, normal Orthodox Jew doesn't do such things. But the answer is, when you have al pi there's an issue of Kurv Lamalcha, someone who 
has you know a, a, a close ties to the government. That, that's how it is, you know. There, there are, you know, it, it can. That that's the way it works. So whatever it is, thank you. Thank you for watching. You know, so, so again, you know, if you if you have an extenuating circumstance where you absolutely must do this, you know, all right, you know, so so we figure it out. But but stop just to just because you you, you can't handle going without a a waffle or, or a pancake for for. Uh, Mussar issue than a halachic issue, I would say. You know, but I, I have my own things. I have issues with self-control, so it is what it is. All right. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. We'll see you later. Take care.